Welcome to the second part of my series about guitars. So this is especially for you if you are a beginner or maybe having played for a while some string instrument like a guitar, ukulele or bass guitar and want to understand a bit more what's the practical things to look out for if you want to buy yourself a guitar. So in the first part we did especially talk about the size, so it should match your body size. Maybe not start with metal strings first, the thin ones, the thick ones on the bass are okay. That's part one. Now getting into the details, uh, what, yeah, what to watch out for, especially if you buy maybe used on some market. Otherwise, of course, just go to your local dealer but your local dealer maybe does not have all the variety of guitars, but um, still very helpful advice probably there. And also if you go buy a guitar, bring it there maybe to have a check on the setup. That having said, we have some exotics here, which I'm excited about to share. So for example, this is my bass guitar that is not made out of wood. Um, Wood is fine, especially for guitars, but there's other options as well. Also the 3D printing ukuleles. And um, I have selected those guitars because I can show you specific details on every one of them. So let's get into it. For example, what not to buy if you actually want to play it is a guitar that has a broken body. So. You can use that as decoration or maybe as a drum. So we use this uh, drum guitar at school basically. But you see here, maybe somebody stepped on it or something. So this is um, pressed inside and this is, yeah. You see here, there's severe cracks. So this is not a guitar that you want to continue playing. So watch out for severe damage. This is one case of severe damage that's very difficult or impossible to repair. So unless it's a very personal guitar, um, the days for this as a guitar is over. Um, but if there's a school, People like to, children like to just play on it and make some noise or even um, use it like pretending to be playing. Um, that's what they do to play. Um, so <coughs> this is decoration or drum. Then if there is maybe a hole in the body, it may look scary, but you actually can use it. So um, I, I wouldn't mind if, if the rest is uh, okay, then why not? So the problem though is this is a half size guitar and it's not having that much volume and I think it's just not sounding well. So the strings are very loose in tensioning. One did say or suggest like, okay, go and have it like double the tension, but I, I don't trust the guitar that it, uh, uh, it could handle this. So, and it's of course having very old strings because I didn't spend time changing uh, strings on a guitar with this uh, setup and holes. So, uh, and they are not used that much in, in our school. So I, I leave it like that. So just saying there is guitars like this, I wouldn't recommend them that much. I would more than recommend a proper ukulele, for example. And otherwise, I would suggest the three-quarter size guitar. Um, yes, so I think you get a good price for maybe a decent guitar just because it has a hole in it. And some guitars are actually famous because they are somehow messed up and then increase in value if they are played by a well-known artist. So that's an interesting culture, I think. Then we have something called a guitar lily, which the name suggests it's 
sits somewhere between the ukulele and the guitar. So that means it has six strings. It has uh, um, the same issues as the half size guitar. It's not having that much volume. The strings are a bit loose. And so here again, you could do that. Uh, it's of course very good for traveling. If you like the sound or you don't care, fine. But I think a tenor ukulele, which has a similar sized body and neck and everything, just is more fun to play them. It's having more color in the sound and the strings here have more tension. So um, it's probably difficult to see, but let's try. So the regular nylon strings, they are pretty much clear. And those high tensioning strings, they are a bit more white, as said, so it's tricky to maybe see it on the camera, but you will tell the difference. Here you can maybe see it a bit. So here's a bit more clear, there's a bit more white. So this indicates they, they need more uh, string tension, and um, this helps to produce, um, yeah, this, what I think is more harmonic um, tone on a small instrument than having loose uh, strings on the small body. So, recommendation for tenor ukulele or concert ukulele over very small guitars. And so that's also what I wanted to say, like I will talk about ukuleles, even if you're more like heading towards a guitar, uh, you probably will still get out of it something because the practical physics are pretty much the same for most of those guitars. Um, so hang with me, it will make sense probably when you get the whole picture. On the opposite end, we have a very interesting guitar here, which is a baritone guitar. So. It has six strings as well, but it only has uh, the five strings of the guitar. It misses the highest string, but has instead a lower string. So you have the same tuning from the guitar from the second string onwards, if it would be in tune. And then you have a B in uh, this case in the standard tuning below. So um, I'm not going into playing everyone that much, just showing you a bit uh, and it's probably difficult to hear the nuances anyway, even if I would record it probably. So just giving an idea like it, it was too large for a guitar if I saw it at, at once, but then it's too little for a bass and it has six strings, but it's it, it i actually did find one that um somebody that worked before here at the school uh put bass strings four bass strings on this guitar and so it was very weird to find this uh, guitar and it's actually also missing the <coughs> what is called bridge inlay so you see here uh here should sit something white that keeps pushing the uh, strings a bit up, but it's a bit old and the neck is bent very much. So I want to have it as flat as possible and it actually works quite well because the end here does not touch any more of the strings because it's also tilted a bit in this direction. So technically they are sitting now on the first end, which gives us a quite good sound. Of course, now you could say, okay, it's technically a bit too far there, but it's, it's fair. It's an old guitar. It's just for demonstration at school. We are not going to play it that professional here. And just giving you an idea, there's some exotic varieties. If you want to have a bit of a different guitar, if you are used to the standard guitar and want to have another flavor, baritone guitar may be a cool thing to look to. 
Yes. And we have some gems here. So, like, if you go to a second-hand market and find a guitar that comes with a proper case, that's definitely worth looking at because they are usually very well made. They were maybe expensive when they were built. And this pretty piece here is built in 1977. So 50 years about. And it has a very lovely tone. Yet it's missing a bit of a bass, and that was interesting for me to discover. So if I play it just for myself and listening from the perspective like above the guitar, I prefer this sound over the classic school guitar that are also very old. Um, but then when a friend came and played this guitar and I sat in front, I actually changed my mind to the opposite because this is lacking a bit of bass which the normal cheap guitars have. So that was very interesting for me. And this is a guitar that you maybe should give to a pro in terms of uh, restoration and repairing something unless you have already worked on several other guitars. So I did work on all the school guitars, which are like 30-ish or 40 with the other not acoustic guitars. And so this was then one of the guitars that I did last after I had gained some experience. And just for the fun of it, so here you see the bridge inlay, the white thing here, and this is uh, I did it myself out of out of bone, and I even did some compensation. So compensation means those little st uh, strings they should sit a bit differently than the other strings. So here you have the edge on uh, this end, and on those two, I did make the end that touches the strings on the other side. So. There you may see it to some degree. But anyway, had fun doing it, so I wanted to have it as low as possible. So you see here, it's not that much going up. Um, could have been lower, maybe, but it's it, it actually would then start to uh, touch too much. That was the issue. Now I remember. So now it's still producing clear sounds And it's not ringing by touching the fretboard. So if the strings would get too low Then you will have a rattling sound. So actually I had it lower and then I did go back um, to this one. So This is the best that I can get out of this guitar and this is like acceptable, but high already so you need to press it down a lot what's more interesting it has a very thin neck so i i did prepare a bit here as you may now realize so the neck is actually tricky to measure um come on so we have an inch here at what would be the seventh fret, so five, six, seven ish. And on the standard guitar, on the seventh, we have. Okay, not that much more here, but that that cannot be. Let's let's compare it directly. <coughs> I think you can even see it, don't you? Uh, 
so it's not that much but if you have your fingers around it it is a lot of a difference all right Next thing that I wanted to show you is the rattling sound which we have here. Yeah, so you hear first a clear sound and then it starts especially when you go up. This means uh, it is too low, so we would need to get even higher, but it's already quite high. So this is like a guitar that's not very well uh, to play. And it has a broken string, obviously. If that happens to you, check the place where it's uh, broken. So maybe here's something sharp. Use some sandpaper there to reduce the short lifespan of strings. So this is something that I wouldn't buy then technically. Yeah. So it's very high on this area and still very rattling. So better than non-guitar, but not too cool to play. Here another example just for the fun of it. It's that low that it's not even ringing out. Yes, so here just for demonstration I did remove this uh, bridge inlay and so uh, it's then just not playable at all. Yeah, so this can also happen if you go too low on this end. It's called the nut. Um, and my advice, if you ever touch the nut or the bridge inlay, um, unless you really know what you're doing, keep the original one and buy yourself a new piece and then you can adjust the new piece. And it's then, even if you put it in, um, the, the string tension works on the neck and so it will find its position just a bit uh, later and the guitar that i showed you from 1977 uh, it actually did rattle on one of the strings uh, as i just restringed it and i was yeah a bit unhappy so because i then probably did it wrong but then after a week the neck and more and then it sounded perfect which resulted in the best setup that i can do for that guitar there without changing it again so be patient for the neck to return when you put on the string tension and keep the original parts on those if you touch them if you need to fall back because uh, you have gone too low because once removed, mm, tricky, not possible to get back. <clears throat> we have another gem here. Uh, I was happy to find this guitar in this paper box. The other side covered in it as well. Uh, at my workplace and you can look it up if there is a sticker in it so this is a Sigma guitar uh, with a number 42663 which indicated that this guitar was probably built around the 80s and it has barely any sign of being used so that's quite rare. 
get these R mass product guitars. So I looked it up. So it's around 100 euros what they sell in the average condition. Maybe this one would get a bit more, but not that expensive. But precious. And so the interesting thing is the strings probably yeah 40 years old or something um don't think they they ever got to to change and it's just has been sitting in that box so the nylon strings are fair and they do not rot away um then the next string looks like more or less new the second to last year is fair and then the next one is just so rotten so it's already showing some sometimes green here if you go to the bottom the first here the the e string has green it's just a normal rust and then this should be out of the same material but it's not affected at all so this is very interesting and so they still sound all right if they would be in tune but um, when i play it it's not fun how it feels and the fingers will pick up all the rust and stuff so for that reason alone even if they would sound good uh definitely time to change the strings here and then it's a bit dry here, so the wood would need a bit of oil. So that's standard taking care and maintenance, uh, especially here as we have a very dry climate, which leads us to the next guitar. So this is a beginner's electric guitar that somebody bought here some years ago and I already removed the issue but it um, has those frets too wide so um, I will show that in another video where it's more focusing on actually how to fix those things and what you can do and what the issues are sometimes and I, I did hurt my fingers when just playing it especially on, on this end and it was really yeah scratching uh, the surface of my fingers so it basically was not playable and I first thought because it's a new guitar what has gone wrong here but it's not the fault of the manufacturer but it's just um, the standard um, what what happens to to guitar made out of wood that was produced in let's say the average climate then shipped here up to the north of sweden and then it's shrinking and it's actually it was a lot so it was more than one millimeter uh, that the snack shrinked and then you have to yeah spend some time fixing it to make this being playable again so that can happen and that's why you probably have heard or seen uh, that those very expensive um, acoustic guitars made out of wood um, uh, usually want to have climate controlled um, storage <clears throat> and so that leads us to the exploration of what's possible with other materials so i said the base um, has uh, uh, not being is not being made out of wood and we go to the 3d printed ukuleles so they sound all right <laughs> I tuned them roughly a while ago. They, of course, get out of tune. And as always with new strings, like on these, um, they don't stay very long in tune. You have to retune them a lot. But uh, the thing is, uh, they bend really a lot. So here my favorite method of showing is 
having a USB plug and you can see there's so much room in between and that's a lot to press down and that results in not being properly in tune when being played. What does that mean exactly? We have some tuning up here. So let's say <coughs> tune this as it's supposed to be to a G. Yeah. So that's fair enough. Then we go to the 12th thread, which should also be a G. And it's already suggesting we are at G sharp, which is a half step over the G. So if I go back, I then have G, but it's it's not at the it's just not at all at the right place. So this is due to the high position and I bend the string by pushing it down, resulting in very poor quality of tone. And so I could show this also on the guitar. But this is like the most extreme example here. And the cheap ukulele has that as well. So the like pink one. And this is asset fair for kids that throw it around. But um, you could measure that yourself if you're familiar with the tuning app. Uh, so check the tuning from like the open string to the 12th, which is double the frequency always, or should be if the guitar is properly made and set up. So in another video, I will try to get the other piece in here. So the designer did anticipate the, the bending, so you can adjust this with another piece that has another, another angle. And then if you are into building why not? Otherwise, have a ready-made ukulele or whatever. Um, the thing is, you wouldn't have any issues with wood getting dry here, so that's the pro. And uh, what else? Mm, this is made out of carbon fiber filament, actually, so there's not many printers that can print it. I think this is a bit more nicer and harmonic than the standard PLA filament and it, it the touch is is smoother so I prefer carbon fiber over the PLA filament and they both has have these uh, carbon fiber necks so it's only the body that makes the difference here in terms of my judgment for the sound of the 3d printed ukulele and yeah, I hope I can make it work with the, another angle. Um, then, before we go to the base, let me also show you this. And uh, this is the most difficult guitar to play. I have here in this array, so it has the thin metal strings. And it sounds a bit harsh to me, and it has the thickest neck of them all. So, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, here we go. Here we have one point. 1.8, almost 1.2 inches, and this is just very, very thick. So I found them, uh, this one without strings, and then you don't know how much it will bend. So the bending is fair. Let's check with the cable. I can push it under here, so 
I would say it's at the limit. Yeah, I would like to have it less, but it's not a catastrophe uh, as with the ukulele. So as a cheap guitar, if you're already into playing metal strings, fine, but definitely not a beginner's guitar. So then let me just start with this beginner's standard model, which is Fender Precision Bass. Uh, I think Wikipedia suggested to me that this model was first released in 1950-51-ish. And so there it was like from playing an upright play, upright acoustic bass, to having an electrified bass with these pickups that can be played horizontally and carried on a strap. And so it did have then the adjustments needed to be made uh, to deal with the higher string tension of these metal uh, base strings. And so they are thick and they need more tension than the guitar strings. And so that's why you have not a hollow body, but a massive wooden body. And typically you then also have them screwed together and this is affecting the sound a bit. Some are better, some are worse in yeah, uh, making the sound travel through those difficult, different parts of the body. And I didn't like the idea too much owning one of these more or less heavy instruments that I am supposed to carry around my shoulder for a long time. And so I was wondering like, hmm, maybe. So there's shorter ones like seven eighth scale. Uh, so reducing a bit of the weight, but I also wanted to be able to play them acoustic and you don't hear much because there is not a resonating body. It's meant to be played with a pickup, which is fine. But in some occasions I maybe don't want to play um, with an amplifier and so then I found this lovely piece and so this is just for showing you what's, what's possible and uh, the material has a name called uh, tunable composite and it's mixed out of several materials uh, and some are kept secret because uh, he did a lot of research, Heiko who built this, um, how different components um, resonate with different frequencies and so one major component is uh, carbon fiber of course. It also has a layer of graphite which also means protecting and shielding it with the electrical um, components so there is no noise from the outside coming in and there is no screw that means it's a single piece body and even the neck is hollow and so this means a lot so if you are into guitars this is like uh, wow what's possible here and um, i'm not into playing that much in this video and so the the lowest B string is always fun to have. The four high ones is the same as the standard bass there. You have all the knobs you would like to have on this bass to change um, a lot of um, the sound and I, I really like it. It's really pleasing to have this shape on the body. Uh, this thing is just a bit longer as the other one to have the best balance in, in weight distribution and there's so many details here going on and I really love this one and so in, in terms of physics the, the string does not have that much mass and it needs to get the body vibrating to amplify some frequencies and so the more lightweight the body is, the more resonance you get 
because it's physics and this is the principle what this does so and wood has especially in the base frequencies more an absorbing character and especially for a bass guitar it makes sense to look at other materials and there's other attempts as well but mm, often they do not sound that harmonic and companies called Basslab I do not have any contracts with them it's just what found me I know how go for 10 years and I was happy to visit him and I just needed to take this bass home with me and I'm very happy to have it so that's what you can do I give you a yeah hope that helped giving you an uh, overview and this is for me just ah very fun to play and Heiko reminded me just exactly of that if your instrument is not fun to play you will not play that much and then it's just standing there and not doing something so whatever that means for you which is the right choice for you I hope you will find some instrument that is fun for you to play whatever it is ukulele guitar bass it's the second uh, important thing the most important thing is having fun and so the next thing would be how to actually learn playing it uh, just giving you a short uh, outlook here because I will need uh, time to edit the other videos but I did learn uh, a lot with an app called Musician there's others as well um, but I spent 100 hours now in bass and 100 hour in guitar and around 30 in ukulele so that's quite some time spent there and it helped me so much because there's a guided process to follow it's very fun because they have listens and gives you feedback how well you can play there's instructional videos and that's more useful than random videos i think especially if you are a beginner or having an experienced teacher that can guide you on your individual path so that's a very easy and fun way to learn if you're a beginner of course my background as a drummer being 30 years of a drummer helps with understanding rhythm and stuff but um, give it a try and i think my premium membership for musician was one of the best investments ever like it's amazing how fast uh, you can learn with these apps and so that's just a brief overview uh, outlook and I will try to upload a video with my uh, detailed experience learning with musician as well in a while other than that I hope you have a lot of fun discovering your instrument I will or I already already have actually also a video for how to go into intuitive piano playing so if you are maybe more the piano guy or know somebody who is uh, wanting to play his or her own style on piano this is something to consider there's of course music I make and there's a special thing called piano channeling uh, there I connect with you and play what I feel with a heart to heart connection so that's evolved out of all of this and I, I like doing it and I look forward to connect with you I hope you like that and see you again soon and happy to hear from you bye bye